Okay, one more time. <laughs> uh, every time I keep coming to a different episode for the third Doctor so far here, that, oh, this is the one that establishes the, uh, the era of uh, Pertwee's Doctor, and uh, quite a few do as you go forward. But finally, uh, the second season uh, really does solidify <laughs> the unit era of uh, the third Doctor and all that with, uh, and of course, uh, the Terror of the Autons uh, is uh, highly significant. Uh, and uh, not because the Autons return. Uh, yeah, you get that uh, villain from the first uh, adventure for the third Doctor. They show up again. But this time their ally is who uh, is uh, vitally uh, significant and important for the rest of Doctor Who lore. And that, of course, is the uh, first appearance, or is it, oh, <laughs> of the Master, uh, first performed by Roger Delgado. And um, I, I say that, or oh, is he? I mean, you... you there's some liberties one could take and suggest that, oh, could the monk and the war chief have possibly been other incarnations of the master? Or, no, they're, they're their own characters. Uh, there's other rogue uh, time lords that the Doctor will face. You know, obviously Omega, who uh, was, you know, well, actually a good man who got a, a raw deal uh, and becomes a villain. And uh, and then, of course, someone who's just always totally evil, Morbius. And so, you know, th it happens. And, of course, the Ronnie uh, came along. But uh, the Master just was, is what he was designed to be. He's the Professor Moriarty for the, for the Doctor's homes. And, uh, you know, his, his, his mirror image. And uh, right off the bat, you get some little tidbits of a backstory there. Uh, I don't know that it was thought through more than that, but that uh, the Doctor and the Master uh, actually knew each other on a personal level in their time on Gallifrey, and that uh, in some ways the Master was the better, uh, you know, student, you know, scored better or what have you, uh, because uh, the Doctor receives a visit from a Time Lord who shows up. Uh, to warn him that the Master is on the planet. I don't know why the Time Lords can't go and capture the Master the way they did the Doctor at the end of War Games. <laughs> but uh, I guess uh, the Master's TARDIS is probably better than the Doctor's TARDIS. Maybe something. Who knows? But um, so that's the deal. The Doctor gets the warning. Uh, oh, the plot's afoot uh, with uh, the Master, uh, uh, you know, joining in with the, uh, the Nestines. Uh, and, uh, and so once again, another invasion of earth by these, uh, uh plastic uh, creatures. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and of course the look of the nesting, uh, the nest, uh, the, uh, all times, uh, is sort of that spooky nature. Like I, I, I likened it to Michael Myers from Halloween and all that, that sort of vacant face that you see out of the, uh, walking, uh, mannequins and whatnot does have that spooky element and this one well <laughs> there is a creepy nature of the figures they end up taking the form of with the you know dressed up like uh, you know barbershop quartets or, and uh, the giant heads uh marching about uh <laughs> it does have this bit of surrealism to it uh, uh but i don't know i prefer the mannequins to these and, uh, and, but it, it, a lot of it just wasn't as good as Spearhead from Space. Uh, some of it was a bit, uh, kind of hokey here and there. The master scenes are, are, are good, and you get that confrontation between the two where there's even a bit of a, uh, respect between the two, and they admire one another's talent and whatnot. Um, but, uh, ultimately, uh, the master at the last minute, interestingly enough, uh, in a radio telescope. Yes. Uh, cause that's how the fourth doctor will meet his end fighting the master in a radio telescope. But, um, you know, and he says, well, he says, ah, it's too late, doctor. The, uh, the nestings are taking over and all that. Well, how do you know they're, they're, uh, they're going to, uh, not dominate you or get rid of you or what have you in the master. Oh, 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 oh I didn't think of that. You know, <laughs> It's, I, you know, I don't know. Um, so it, it was kind of weak uh, in that aspect. But uh, one of the uh, scenes that I, I kind of wish they had just done it with a uh, with the guy just in his mask and a wig or what have you. When uh, Joe and the doctor, uh, they are taken away in a, a, a police car 
and they, they think that, well, we're going to the station, we'll be safe from the uh, the bad guys and all that. Well, no, it's one of the autons taking them away to, I guess, be executed. And then they suddenly realize that the guy turns around, but it's a normal guy sitting in it at first, and then they cut to the, to the mask. I kind of thought it would have been more effective if it was just the mask. You know, they just had the wig. You saw him from behind. They, they didn't know who he was. But then again, well, somebody should have noticed that one of the officers sitting in the car was not what he appeared. But it does have that sort of shock spooky look of that blank face staring at you. Uh, but uh, that's about it. Uh, th there's other interesting tidbits you get about uh, the Doctor and the, the TARDIS and, you, and the uh, dematerialization uh, circuit. He figures he'll steal the one from the Master, and now his TARDIS will work. But, of course, the Master's TARDIS is a different uh, uh, design or whatever. They, they eventually call the Doctor's TARDIS a Type 40, and I'm not sure what type the Master's is. I don't know. Uh, type 60 or something <laughs> you know a type 80 <laughs> uh but so uh and it doesn't work on his TARDIS but in the meantime he's able to strand the master on earth uh because he's going to keep that deal materialization circuit and so the master's TARDIS uh cannot leave um uh, and uh, so uh you know little things like that that are always kind of cool in developing uh, what the uh doctor technology is and uh, how it works and whatnot it's always you know neat little things uh but other than that uh some and of course the performances are good uh, the the relationship between the characters continues uh, there's even uh, moments where uh, the brigadier gets one up on the doctor you know the, the introduction of joe uh, uh, you know, Liz Shaw is just gone and they decided she wanted to pursue her career and it wasn't going to happen if she was just being the doctor's assistant. And so she goes, who knows? Uh, I, I do understand at the last adventure, uh, that, uh, Carolyn John was, had become pregnant at the time. So maybe she, you know, you know, left acting for a while because of that. And so they had to move on with someone else. I don't know. But anyway, uh, we get, uh, Joe Grant who Joe Grant, uh, uh is kind of the quintessential, a, a companion for uh, a John Pertwee. Of course, uh, Elizabeth Sladen comes in with Sarah Jane, and Sarah Jane is one of the most, if not the most popular companion of the Doctor Who stories. Uh, but uh, Joe Grant, when uh, Pertwee's Doctor is just, you know, just just fits with the whole uh, makeup there. So she's brought in, and and the Doctor just doesn't have any respect for her, thinks she's a dingbat, and uh, the Brigadier says, well, tell her you don't want her around. And so then he <laughs> He can't do it. <laughs> and the Brigadier knew that. <laughs> and so it's a good moment, you know. And he says, ah, yeah, I got one over you, didn't I? <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, so all that's good stuff. Uh, and uh, ultimately uh, it ends with uh, the, the Master uh, mysteriously disappearing, but he's able to uh, use his ability to disguise but in this case, on some poor hapless idiot who uh, the people, they, the, the, uh, the unit forces think is the master and they think he's threatening them, but it's really uh, the poor dupe with a mask on. They pull it off and, oh, it's him. It's not the master and all that. Uh, and that will uh, repeat throughout uh, uh, Delgado's uh, uh, tenure as the master, which unfortunately ended with his untimely demise in a, uh, a car accident, I believe. And uh, it's all very sad, but uh, he certainly establishes the master uh, not as uh, a psychopath or insane. He's just evil, <laughs> you know, and he's calculated, and he's looking to profit at it. He's looking for some means by to gain power or what have you. Um, later on, we're getting more and more that he's he's crazy. You know, obviously in New Who, that was the deal, and uh, he had a. a, a an incident when he was a child and exposed to the, the time vortex and it drove him insane and so that's why he is the way he is i don't know that it entirely fits when you look back at the original uh this is a cool calculating guy uh he cares only about himself uh and that's what leads him uh, to, to be corrupt and uh villainous but i don't really detect him as being uh insane um uh, but well you know things can change but the the new who establishes it that he always was that way so eh, i don't know but anyway uh I, 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 the master is cool he's a cool introduction for him uh and the contrast between the two about how he seems to be 
a lot of ways more in control, uh, more uh, kind of elegant and fitting in, whereas the doctor looks kind of ridiculous, you know. <laughs> but that's the way the doctor is. Uh, and yet uh, he loses to the doctor, you know. So a lot of ways it's like, well, the sort of streamlined uh, perfectionist villain uh, cleaned up better and this uh, kind of goofy looking crazy guy still gets the better to drop on you because uh, uh, it's almost like the Colombo effect. You underestimate him and, uh, and that happens. So there you go. The master, uh, his first appearance in Doctor Who in Terror of the Altons. Uh, so, uh, well, I don't have a lot more of Pertwee, <laughs> so it's going to take quite a jump as uh, the next episode that I will talk about will be the Curse of Peladon. So, but, and I don't even own Terror of the Altons. I had to watch it online, uh, but it's a significant episode because of the Master and his first appearance, so I felt I should do that one. So there you go. Terror of the Altons. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Say, while you're here, why not like and subscribe and check out that link description below that'll take you to my many stores that have plenty of goodies for you.